A pair of 400 legends made for customers of mine on the eastern side of the United States. Stick around, we'll go over the build, the components used, and the results we got here at Accurate Rifles and Restorations. Stay tuned. Oh yeah, inch away. Saw that one. Yeah. yeah. I think it's ready to kill some real deer. Jeff Montgomery here from Accurate Rifles and Restorations. Today we've got a pair of custom rifles that we've made for a couple guys out in the East Coast. Uh, these are Hawa 1500 Minis chambered in 400 Legend. So we're real excited about this. Um, these have been in the works since winter of 2023. Uh, we had to order a whole bunch of custom parts to get this going. Our customers wanted a nice short package for hunting uh, deer out there in uh, the East Coast. One, uh, one of the guys is from Ohio and the other one is from South Carolina. Uh, so they have some restrictions that they have to deal with out there with their uh, center fire rifle hunting. Uh, there's a couple uh, rules and stipulations. You can't have a traditional like bottleneck style cartridge. Um, apparently they don't want you shooting for uh, long range out there. Uh, so anyway, this is uh, kind of an exciting build. Finally got it uh, all together, uh, did some testing, and uh, got some really good results here. We'll show you that a little later on. We'll go over the build, uh, what it entailed, what all the components were with it, and uh, whatnot. So stick around uh, if you're interested in the 400 Legend or a custom rifle with any cartridge uh, chambering. Um, you've come to the right place. Accurate Rifles and Restorations here in Casper, Wyoming. All right, to start off, we had a little discussion. Uh, customer wanted something that they could hunt with uh, on the East Coast, maybe not the coast, but the Eastern portion of our uh, United States, where they're not quite as free as we are out here in the West uh, to choose uh, whatever uh, Magnum or crazy long range cartridge we want to use. They're a little bit more strict uh, on their rules and regulations and stuff for hunting out there. So, uh, as far as I understand it, you can't have a, a bottleneck style, typical cartridge there. Got to be a somewhat straight wall. Yeah, for years, they have used slugs, things like that. Um, again, I'm not from those areas for hunting, so I really can't comment on that. I'm not an expert on it, but... Uh, 
Uh, I'm a gunsmith for hire. The guys called me and asked me to put these together for them, so we did. Uh, it was a really fun project. So the first thing to do in this process was to uh, try to find a barrel. So the 400 Legend is a very uncommon bore size. It's, uh, it's not your typical 10 millimeter or 40 cal. So as far as I understood it, I think it's a little bit smaller than those two. Uh, so the barrels had to be custom made. Um, honestly, I had a heck of a time. I called all my sources, uh, all the companies that I deal with, uh, Proof Research, Bartley and Krieger, Hart, Brooks, Benchmark. Boy, um, I think I checked with McGowan, Carbon 6, which is also McGowan, and uh, pretty much, you know, everybody I could think of. And I was really starting to get uh, a little bit discouraged there because I couldn't seem to find a barrel. Uh, but I did stumble upon a, a source, uh, an outfit called Preferred Barrel Blanks. Um, got the box down here. Preferred Barrel Blanks, and they are in Utah, Hilldale, Utah. Relatively new company. Spoke with a gentleman over there, I believe it was the owner, and they actually said they're tooling up to start doing the 400 caliber uh, bores. Uh, so. Basically, I ordered two on the spot. Um, as you can see, they're, they've been blued, so uh, chrome molly. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what exact alloy they're using, but it's chrome molly, so it can be blued. Uh, fairly large contour on the, uh, on the contour. Um, honestly, I don't know exactly what they call this contour. But uh, it's, a, it's a little bit heavier. I think it's a number six, but don't hold me to that. I'll probably put something there in the screen there to correct myself. Um, but anyway, preferred barrel blanks supplied the barrels. Um, they were originally 20 inches long. Uh, I cut them down to 18 as per the customer request. 18 inches, uh, and we gave them a threaded uh, muzzle with a flat slash 60 degree crown and a nice protected knurled cap here so it's a three quarter 24 muzzle thread that can accommodate pretty much any suppressor adapter and uh and or muzzle device usually a brake or something like that uh, but these were all machined here in house custom for for our customers The uh, heart and soul of the rifle is based off of a Howa 1500 Mini. I suggested going with the Howa Mini because it is kind of designed for a shorter cartridge like the 400 Legend. It's um, feed, the feed port and the ejection port are cut pretty short um, to allow shorter cartridges to function without prematurely ejecting the magazine. And also, just reducing weight and, and overall material and things like that. To use a short action or a long action with this cartridge would probably be pretty bad for feeding reliability just because a short stubby cartridge such as a 400 Legend it doesn't have the bottleneck and it doesn't have, it has a short stubby bullet. So what can tend to happen with a regular short action even is the back end of the cartridge will pop up out early and kind of get jammed up. So we didn't want any of that kind of stuff happening. The 400 Legend is relatively new cartridge on the market and it's, it's had mixed reviews. You know, it's not something I'd choose to shoot out here out west where we have thousands of yards to deal with. This is more of a rock chucker kind of thing, short range, uh, CQB type of scenario, uh, short range hunting, that is. While they shoot fairly well, uh, I've tested that. We'll show you some groups and footage of that later on. 
Uh, they did group pretty well. The barrels I'm fairly impressed with. Um, the, their effectiveness past 200 or 300 yards is pretty pretty poor, pretty minimal. Uh, so, you know, that they've got a purpose, uh, and uh, that's they're going to have plenty of uh, use uh, with these guys because they, you know, they hike around cornfields or, you know, out in Carolina, there might be some mountain stuff out there, but uh, certainly in Ohio, it's pretty much flat. There's a little bit more topography than, say, Indiana or something like that. But uh, anyway, not, uh, not a long range rig by any means, by any stretch of imagination. Uh, so short, stubby barrel, kind of perfect for this. Uh, should be a really good, uh, fun, and uh, effective uh, rifle for, for their situation. So we sourced the Howa Mini 1500, 1500 Mini. These were originally chambered in 6.5 Grendel, but uh, reasonably priced. But they came basically the entire action. The barreled action is uh, well, minus this barrel, but they had their own barrels on them. Did not have the rail, but the bolt, the, uh, the nice quality plastic bottom metal that they supply with theirs, and uh, magazine, trigger. Basically everything in the, it's besides the sock and a, and a means to mount your uh, optics, you know, scope mount, rail or or what what have you. It, it, they were pre-drilled and tapped for six forty eight screws, and I did get these MDT um, twenty MOA scope pieces. The the four hundred Legend being a relatively new cartridge, there's there are some factory made rifles in production. Uh, off the top of my head, Winchester. The uh, lower, I think, XPR or, or whatever their, their like, low-end budget model rifle is. I think Browning makes one, maybe in the Able or the Expo. Um, Mossberg, that's who I'm thinking of, XPR. Mossberg makes one. Uh, but these are very, very low-quality, low-budget, very, uh, shall we say, starter rifles, right? So... We wanted to kind of step up the game on the 400 Legend and the availability. Uh, what you're getting here is a very quality product, uh, custom made and handmade with a quality barrel and a few other aspects that I did to the rifles to ensure ultimate uh, uh, accuracy and, uh, and whatnot, you know, despite the fact that it's a rock trucker. So had to find a reamer. Uh, I couldn't find anything in stock. It's just like the barrels. There was really nothing out there, at least pre-made. So I called my source over at PTG, Pacific Tool and Gauge, um, gave him my specifications. I basically, we were going off a of Sandy spec uh, with no custom throat or anything like that. So I just wanted a straight up standard Sammy spec reamer for that. And uh, so they supplied that for us, um, the reamer and the go gauge, the go and no go gauges. The, were supplied by PTG. They uh, they cut very nicely, uh, reasonably priced, and they actually arrived really quickly. Actually, I think I got them within a month's time, which was surprising. It seems like PTG is really stepping up their game for a couple of years. There, they were really a long, long waiting period. So it's nice to see that they're actually being uh, proactive about their long lead times that they used to have. It's great they're busy and everything, but it just really stinks when you have to wait six months for a reamer or something like that. So we sourced the reamer. Uh, the stocks, they are made by Boyd's. Um, they were also one of the only choices for the Howa 1500 Mini in a pre-made, um, um, pretty basically ready to go stock. There was some work to do with the stocks. We'll get into that a little later, uh, showing you some of, the, some of that stuff. But uh, basically, we just opened up the barrel channel to accommodate for the little bit larger barrel. And then we pillar bedded both actions uh, with custom made pillars and uh, precision bedding job in there. Uh, stress free, uh, uh, of course. No stress uh, stresses involved in the, in the stock portions of these rifles. Free floated barrels all the way up to the shank where the shank has a little bit of a pad to hold, uh, just to hold that support, that thicker portion of the shank of the barrel. Uh, free floated all the way out. And uh, like I said, pillar bedded um, for the length of the action, the entire full length pillar bedded. Pillar bedded.
So to prepare, um, I took the original barreled actions uh, as how I shipped them. Uh, immediately removed the original barrels because they tend to be not that good and my customer wanted a custom barrel anyway. Plus they weren't the uh, appropriate uh, caliber for the 400 Legend. You know, obviously a 6.5 Grendel's not gonna work. So we got the barrels off. They came off relatively easy. I mean, they're tight, just like any other factory barrel, but they came right off uh, with a big old wrench and a vise and everything else. Uh, we'll show you that, uh, just pop it off the barrels. Got the barrels off and then did some preliminary checks on the actions just to kind of see, make sure there's no extreme run out on any surfaces or anything like that. Uh, we did some accurizing work the bolt has been uh, sleeved and then uh, trued up. All the surfaces have been trued up. Uh, the backs of the logs. And uh, face the receiver, things like that. So with the original barrel, um, I recycled that into a mandrel to support the action, the receiver portion of the action, so that we could true up the features of the receiver in the lathe. So this is a custom-made mandrel that fits precisely the bolt bore raceway here of both these actions. They were very, very close uh, internal, dia uh, internal diameter uh, of the bolt bore raceway. So custom-made mandrel so one of the barrels turned into this mandrel uh, the other half of it is right here uh, that'll be repurposed into sleeves or something else later on down the road I usually recycle all the, the old barrels that I get they're uh, they're handy for making sleeves or bushing or whatever out of so now we've got a mandrel for any other future Powa 1500 minis that come in as long as it'll fit the raceway so like I said we trued up the receiver then we worked on the bolt. The bolt actually features a rear sleeve, uh, also custom made. This is made from 416, stress proof stainless steel. Um, not from these barrels. Um, I pre make all my sleeves for Remington 700s. However, these bolts are a way smaller diameter, so I had to custom make these sleeves as well. So, like I said, those sleeves would be, were made from 416, stress proof stainless steel. Right, so we got the bolts sleeved, uh, then we got them sized down to fit without any slop in the action in the receiver. Uh, then we proceeded to go ahead and lap in the lugs under the trigger pressure, as we always do in, the, in a real world environment to get those lugs lapped in appropriately um, after they've been trued up. So all the truing work had been completed. Uh, then we took the new dimensions off the newly machined surfaces and uh, went ahead and made up our spec sheet for each rifle. Um, the spec sheet just provides all the dimensions and the features of the breech and the barrel, several aspects of the action and things like that. It's for my records, it's for the customer. Um, I just like to cover my, my rear with uh, information like that. And then we can go back later on, you know, say they have a question about something or go to a different gunsmith. At least they have some of that information that they can pass along and uh, make life easier for people down the road. So once um, the measurements were taken, um, how was have something called a metric thread for the barrel breach? Um, so as with any new or unfamiliar kind of a breach system, I'll usually make a stub first out of just steel, just cold rolled steel. I'll make these stubs 
that allow me to find out the new internal diameter of the threads and uh, obviously just make sure that the, the metric thread pitch is 1.0, 1, 1 millimeter that is, because most of the barrels I work on here, at least in the States, are unified threads, a typical standard unified thread. So there's a little bit different way of doing threads, metric threads on a lathe, on most lathes that is, unless they are met made in, a, in Europe or metric, have metric measurements already on them. Um, so without getting too heavy duty into the lathe operations, um, basically you have to run the machine with the half nut engaged the entire time. So you can't just take a pass, disengage, and then manually go back like you do with a normal... Uh, normal thread, a normal a U.S. thread. Um, so basically you have to turn the machine on, get it rolling. You have to cut it off before it crashes. Obviously you have to stop that before it crashes into anything. Pull the tool back, reverse the machine. So you're basically, the entire operation is under power of the machine. So it's a little bit trickier. Maybe not trickier, it's just a little bit more risky. That, uh, you know, if you don't stop the machine in time, it's just going to go right through the chuck and everything else. So, um, not unfamiliar with that. I've done a plenty of normal howas, uh, the 1500 standards, things like that. And uh, other actions like tikas and, um, oh boy, like, uh, I'm at a little bit of a loss here. But there's other metric threaded um, sacos, for instance, uh, sacos and tikas that have that metric thread. So no big deal here, just takes a little bit longer. So that's why I go ahead and make these stubs first. Like I said, that allows me to find out the, the pitch uh, in metric and make sure the machine's cutting it right, make sure it fits, all the dimensions are good before we work on the actual real barrel. I don't wanna wait another six months for another barrel because I did something wrong, so right? Uh, just just kind of care, attention to detail, I like to, it, it takes an extra half hour to do this, so why not? Once that was established, I was good to go off to the races, machine the barrels, uh, as I normally would. So just like any barrel, you'll face it off, uh, face it clean. You go in, turn down the major diameter. Uh, in this case, it's metric. Uh, it was 22 millimeters. Yeah, so 22 millimeters, that was uh, 0 0.8661. Uh, definitely the smallest barrel shank I've worked on that I can that comes to mind, maybe like Old Winchester or something, might have been 7 eighths or something like that, but uh, quite a small shank. So again, just a little bit different. Um, when you're used to dealing with inch or larger uh, barrel shanks, it, it definitely looks kind of funny when you're doing it, but... Uh, it's a Howell 1500 Mini, so it's going to have smaller, smaller dimensions, right? So once the barrels were fit and chambered, we went ahead and test fired it uh, with the um, just a couple boxes of Winchester, uh, the power port ammo you see up here, uh, just to make sure the chamber was good and it, everything was feeding. I had a chance to check the feeding off the magazine and things, and um, Felt pretty good about it. I didn't have any problems, actually. I had a lot of naysayers saying, oh, you'll never get that thing to feed, and you know, you shouldn't bother with that because it'll, it'll be a nightmare and this and that. Eh. If you know how to work the bolt, you got no problems. If you're a little bit hesitant with it, yeah, the thing will pop up on you, and, but it's a training issue, really. Um, it's a matter of physics. The things work great as long as you know how to, how to handle them. So once the breech work was done, we went ahead and flipped the barrel around, did all the muzzle work. Like I said, we went with a three quarter 24 uh, muzzle thread on this with a custom made thread protector that uh, matches seamlessly, more or less. There are knurls on the, uh, on the cap, just so the guy can unscrew it, but uh, seamless thread protectors and uh, a flat slash 60 degree crown. For the bolt work, I also had to make another little fixture um, for the, the nose of the bolt. This would um, hold the, uh, like I said, the nose of the bolt there, like that. So I clamped the, the back end in a four jaw chuck and then had the bolt nose here running in a 
live center, like I do with Remingtons and everything else. And that allowed me to hold it um, rigidly, hold it rigidly enough to uh, do the operation for the sleeving. So yes, everything had to be made in house. Um, all my mandrels and fixtures and things like that, based off the Remington 700 and Winchester 70s, they just don't work with these. So had to make all those parts. Um, so then the barrel was completed. The bolt work, all the action and the, and the barrel work were completed. Then we worked on the stocks. Um, like I said, the stocks were mostly finished. The only work we really had to do was the internals to uh, open up the barrel channel to allow the uh, larger barrels to fit and be free floated. And then pillar bedded, uh, precision pillar bedded the uh, entire length of the action here uh, in, the, in the stocks. Both rifles feature the original trigger that Howa provides. Um, it's a two stage trigger. They're really not bad triggers, in my opinion. So, two stage, so you've got the take up. You probably you can't see this on the video, but it is a two stage. So, once you get past that first stage, it has a nice crisp break. Of course, the safety's on here. It's got a nice crisp break on it. And I think I set it around two and a half to three pounds. So that's pretty impressive for a factory trigger, to tell you the truth. They usually don't get that light. Uh, both rifles feature a three position safety. Um, so safety off, you can fire up with the bolt. Middle position, you can open the bolt, but you can't fire. And then the third position locks the bolt closed and you can't fire. We had custom laser engraved the barrel shank with uh, our logo, the cartridge information. And then we engraved their each customer's respective name, a kind of a nifty little deer skull, and uh, the year uh, 2024 this year for them under a, under their request. So custom laser engraving was done, and then um, obviously I went ahead and reblued everything in our um, Dulight uh, Master Gunsmith bluing system. It's the five tank design. Um, full-on professional bluing system. And as you can see, it works really well. Uh, turns of steel, beautiful blue. Uh, I've used that system for, gosh, like five or six years now, and I've had to replace the salts once. Those systems work amazingly well, and uh, they really do good, do good work for bluing. So uh, once that all was completed, there was a few minor modifications I made to the feed ramp. I increased the angle slightly to accommodate for that cartridge, short stubby cartridge. It was kind of getting, I could feel it kind of digging in, the nose of the bullet was digging in a little bit. So I increased that angle to allow that bullet to, uh, the nose of the bullet to, to ride up and that feed ramp a little bit easier. Um, as well as that, we slightly opened up the feed lips of the magazine. Now, these magazines are plastic, unfortunately. They're very, I mean, they, they are crappy. They're crappy magazines. I, I hate to say it, but uh, I don't know of any steel, like properly made, good quality steel mags for this Howl 1500 Mini. If anybody does know of those, please let me know in the comments uh, or send me a message on the Facebook or whatever. I'd, I'd love to know because these they tend to flex. You know, you get five rounds shoved in there. The, blast, the plastic kind of pushes out. Um, the only th I just opened up the feed lips just a, just a touch just to allow that cartridge to sit up high enough to reliably pick up each round. It was very, very close. I just gave it a little extra. Just again, it's a hunting rifle. I just want to make sure it cycles and you know feeds reliably. Obviously, for the guy out there. So that was all worked out. A couple kinks, no big deal. Um, and then it was off to the to the range to do some testing. Uh, I always function test. You know, make sure everything feeds, fires, extracts, and ejects without any malfunction. And then we're going to get some groupings, obviously, on paper. That's the fun part. So believe it or not, we got, I would say, right around one MOA 
uh, uh, group out of these two rifles. Now, I'll show you the target a little later, but uh, so this was the first. So basically, I put my own personal scope on. It's a Steiner T5XI, TX5I, whatever it is. Uh, put that on there just to have something and kind of just bore scoped it with my eye. <laughs> so that's where the first rifle was shooting. I was aiming obviously here. So I was at least on paper, so I was happy with that. And so first shot, cold bore, clean bore, and then the next four were right up in here. So we got one, two, three, four, they all kind of stacked vertically like that. Second rifle, cold bore, clean bore was right in the middle. And then the following up here, four shots were right there. So for a 400 Legend, I was pretty pleased to see that, actually. You know, it's footage of me shooting it um, and also getting some ballistic data, um, basically just velocity is actually from uh, my friend's Garmin, uh, that new Garmin chronograph that's out and it's all the rage right now. That was a pretty cool unit, actually, to be honest with you. I've, I've not used one myself yet, and uh, to have that opportunity to use that was pretty cool. Uh, it seems to work extremely well. It's a little bit of voodoo black magic because you just set it on the, on the bench next to you when you're shooting, and it Somehow it reads velocities. I, I have no idea. I'm not smart enough to run, understand any of that stuff. But uh, regardless, we got to every shot had a, a good uh, velocity. Average was 2198, so we'll say 2200. Extreme spread is 93. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, what can you ask for with this rock chucker? Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, there's a standard deviation, 24.2, average is 21.98, that was 10 shots, 5 out of each rifle. And then we'll get some shots of the groups on paper, and then I was hitting deer at 200 yards, holding about 5 inches high, which is pretty close to what the box was saying. Sweet. Yeah. We got a pretty big standard deviation and extreme spread. That's to be pretty much expected with a factory round and something like a 400 Legend. That's again just a, it's, it's a rock chucker, right? So we're not talking uh, high speed, low drag, or anything like that. But they did perform well. I was very happy after I did a few group tests. Uh, the range I shoot at has uh, animal silhouettes all the way out to 1,200 yards. I took a couple shots on a deer silhouette at about 200 yards. So zeroed on the target, the bullet begins to drop pretty drastically uh, the further out you go. So I held pretty much back on the, on the very top of the back of the deer, kind of in, in the middle and just like right there in line with the back. And I was able to put that couple shots right in the vital zone, no problems, just holding over a little bit. Um, I reckon a guy would probably zero this guy at about 200 yards just to make sure Anything from 100 to 200 is, is a little bit less holdover, uh, but that's personal preference, so, you know, whatever. So anyway, yeah, I took a couple shots on the steel and ding, ding, ding every single time. And pretty good, pretty good close groups on that, too, the, for the 200 yards. It was more like two inches, two to three inches, but uh, still, you know, for a minute of deer, that's perfect. That's perfectly acceptable. Oh yeah, you inch your way. Saw that one. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's ready to kill some real deer. So everything seemed to come out real well with these rifles. Um, testing proved they're uh, they're going to be good rigs for these guys here coming up this next hunting season. Uh, so yeah, and in, uh, in conclusion, uh, I just wanted to kind of show this the latest build. Uh, this, these twins, uh, the uh, 400 Legend twins here, um, just to kind of showcase our abilities here at Accurate Rifles and Restorations. Um, any budget, any cartridge, really, I mean, as long as it's within the realm of reality uh, and can be done and parts can be found, we can do it for you, no problem. Uh, don't hesitate to get a hold of me. I always put my contact info down in the description. Uh, you can find our social media stuff where you can find a whole bunch of other information, our website, um, 
pictures of 10 over over a decade's worth of gunsmithing work on the website you'll see hundreds of rifles uh anything from precision like real real high-end competition guns like bench rests f-class to prs guns to uh things like this classic hunting rifles and even some older relic stuff like mausers and enfields and things like that i still work on those all the time springfields uh so yeah i i i have no no issue with really any platform when it comes to centerfire uh high precision rifles so anyway you can find any contact information our our lead time most importantly right now is pretty pretty short you know as things grow and progress we're getting busier and busier all the time but i'm not i'm not years out on waiting i'm not even really months at this point um if all the components are here and uh i'm not sick or something weird or, or whatever i never go on vacation but uh, i can usually get your rifle back to you within like a month like three to four weeks you know, under normal conditions uh so give me a chance uh i've got a extremely big uh portfolio tons of happy customers um i'm starting to get some testimonials in for some of the other builds so you'll start seeing some of those in the videos coming up and uh yeah just you know all the rifles i make here at the shop shoot amazingly well my customers are always really really happy if there was any problem i'd stand behind my my work 100 percent. so you know if you have a problem it's not shooting like you want whatever get a hold of me so yeah we've got the like i said we got the reamer in-house the gauge in-house everything's here ready to go uh so especially you guys in the east side of the u.s you know if you're interested in this kind of rifle we can do that for you no problem power 1500 mini minis are still available um if you want to go a custom route um i'm sure i'd have to look at the uh action manufacturers to see if they i'm not sure who offers a real short mini style action like this there's probably something out there that i'm not thinking of but uh with the howa i mean they're not the prettiest action in the world but uh they do the job well you know it's not like a, a fancy defiance or something like that but hey you're you're paying a third of what you would for a for a fancy defiance with these actually probably a fourth uh, these days with these prices geez um so yeah all in all these rifles came in right around four thousand a piece um with all the labor now again it's the labor and the premium materials and uh you know just cost of doing business and things like that so we could probably get you around 3500 to 4000 in today's market as of march or sorry it's june of 2024 at this point summertime time here in casper uh love and life living the dream all that good stuff so Again, don't hesitate to uh, contact me. Uh, please, if you have a second here, uh, scroll down, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, please. If you liked what you saw, feel free to leave a comment, any comment. I don't care if you're criticizing me or praising or whatever, um, or just, just leave a comment. One guy said Gesh the other day, so that's pretty cool. Um, and obviously subscribe to the channel. So the more, more you guys engage with the channel and subscribe, and like and everything the more that shows the uh, powers that be and the computers and the ais and everything out there that controls the internet that we're we're not a bad operation we're 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 good down-to-earth people and just trying to make a living here in this crazy world in this crazy time uh, again so this is jeff montgomery signing out accurate rifles and restorations casper wyoming get in touch we'll get you a great rifle Last one was twenty one ninety eight, now it's twenty one seventy. <laughs>
like it. Good group. Yeah. Good. Pinch or so. Good. Walnut that deer walnut. There you go. Can't be all science. That's right. So what's that? Three? No, it's two hundred. That's a hundred there, or two hundred. That's yeah. two, so that's probably dropping a lot. <laughs> Five inches, yeah. So I should probably hold up a little bit. All right, two hundred yards. I'm gonna hold. I don't know, ten inches high. <laughs> I think I'll hold like right in line with his ear in the middle. Might be too high, but we'll see. Oh, went over it. That was too high. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna hold on the top of his back. Right in the middle. Between the two orange dots. Good. Right in the middle? Yep, right in the middle, down about four inches. Yeah, yep. Okay. Same, same hold. Okay, here's our target. So right here, this is before I zeroed the scope. Cold bore shot, very first uh, cold bore, clean bore shot. And then the rest of the other four, were, well there's three. I reckon the fourth one's probably right about there. You know, so inch, inch-ish group right there. And then here's the second rifle. So, uh, same thing, cold bore, first shot, clean bore. And then there's the four. So, yeah, one ragged hole, granted they're 40 cal, but uh, really happy to see that. It's a nice day today, no wind, about 75 degrees, I'd, I'd guess, 70 to 75. So, yeah. <laughs>